people out there that say maybe maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess what what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. He didn't poke the bad off. He pulled honey on him. That's what Dylan Brooks did. He, he pulled honey on himself. I hear from boy. I'm ready to play, and that's it. I appreciate it. And back the other way, three on one. LeBron taking flight. Oh, sent it with his chest. I've been doing this too long. I don't, I'm not making no statements. He's been issued a flagrant foul penalty too and has been ejected from the game. Yeah, see you later. The fans are making me a villain. The media are making me a villain. That just creates a whole different persona on me. So now you think I intended to hit LeBron James in the nuts. I'm playing basketball, I'm a basketball player. This is Hollywood after all. Yeah. The stage is set for game four as we get you ready. Ramona Shelburne back with us yeah. as well as Tim McMahon who's covering the Grizzlies for this series. So Ramona, last game it was a blowout, right? Yeah. Despite John Morant scoring 22 straight, which is wild in the fourth quarter, we saw all that was made of Dylan Brooks, yeah. right? But his rhetoric, his behavior, yeah. it's part of what makes the Grizzlies the Grizzlies, but how are they viewing this internally? Well, inter I mean, you, every time you ask a question, every time Dylan Brooks does something like this, you go to Tyus and you go to Desmond Bain because those are the two adults that they always trust in front of the cameras. And they always say, you know, we got it. We got our guys back. Yeah. But at some point, you kind of have to wonder, like, it's, you, why isn't Dylan answering these questions, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's the one who puts it out there. And, and Tyus Jones and, and Desmond Bain, Steven Adams used to be in that role when he was before he got hurt. It, it, it comes to a point where this is where you need some veterans on this team, some yeah. some guys that kind of take the load off there because it's always the same two guys who are the mature ones. You know, Tyus Jones has a couple of kids. He's a, sort of a, he calls himself an old soul, but but they're always having to answer for and back up mm. the talk of Dylan Brooks and sometimes the talk of John Morant. Well, I imagine, though, at the end of the day, this is a fine line because it's what makes the Grizzlies the Grizzlies, right? This is this yeah. is what they do. But then, when you look at the box score, and Dylan Brooks is one of seven on jumpers, how, how is that reverberating? Yeah, if you bark, you've got to bite. And look, you can't brick. Just straight up. <laughs> and the, the way that the Lakers are playing him, th those were invitation jumpers, right? They're yep. packing the paint, sagging off Dylan Brooks and saying, if you want to beat us with your three-point shot, prove that you can do it. They're not guarding him. Now, you've got the crowd that's on him. You've got that whole thing. If Dylan Brooks is going to silence the crowd, he has to hit jump shots because mm. those shots will be there for him. And look, I don't think it's a coincidence that John Morant really got rolling when Dylan Brooks yeah. was off the floor. As much as he gives them on defense, and he is legitimately one of the best and most versatile defenders in the league, he has hurt them in this series offensively. If you bark, you got to bite, you can't brick. That was, that was a line, Tim McMahon. That, that was a flourish. Bar. All right, but at the end of the day, he is an unrestricted yeah. free agent this summer. Obviously, you're referring to the fact that he got uh, ejected in that last game that we saw. Should we expect Dylan to, br to be a cornerstone of this franchise for years to come? Stay tuned. This is going to be a very difficult decision for the Grizzlies front office this summer, as you said, when he becomes a free agent. But look, they've showed their cards. They tried to engage the Raptors in conversations about OG Ananobi. Mm. They threw four picks, four first round picks at the Brooklyn Nets and said, we mm -hmm. want Macau Bridges. They drafted Zaire Williams in the first round, trading up to get him. They drafted another small forward this year yep. in David Roddy. Neither of those guys are ready for a, a, that role, but there's a lot that comes along with Dylan Brooks. If he's not going to be part of this, they have to find a way to replace him. And again, we're talking about a guy who is guarding LeBron James in this series. Yep. If they win this series, he's guarding Steph Curry or Darren Fox next round. Not a lot of guys in the league who can do that. Now, the chaos that comes along with him, the shot selection and, and challenges offensively, they've got to figure out, is this a guy they want to move forward with as a part of their core? That's the balance that they're going to need to figure out what ingredients all go well to get to their end result that they're hoping for. Work. Jimmy Butler scored 30 points in just 28 minutes, leading the Heat to a 121-99 victory over the Bucks in Game 3. Miami it became the first team in NBA history to score at least 120 points on 50% shooting in each of their first three My games goodness. of the postseason. Butler, a huge reason why he's turned it up in the postseason during his career every single year.
Butler has had Ooh. 90 points through three games. That is the most by any Heat player to start a postseason in franchise history. And now, of course, Miami up 2-1 to one on the Milwaukee Bucks. I would be remiss not to mention, though, Victor Oladipo. Oh. Such oh. a bummer to watch that. Prayers we are up hoping for, you. for a very, very <laughs> speedy My recovery for him. As we shift our focus to tonight's game, we have the Lakers and the Grizzlies. We have Miami and the Bucks. The Bucks expecting, as Adrian Wojnarowski reported, to get Giannis a to Kumbo back. So what are you expecting in these two tonight, Perk? Well, I'm expecting the Bucks to bounce back in great fashion. Even if Giannis is not, like, fully healthy, just having him back in the lineup is going to help everybody else. But when I'm looking at that Grizzly, Grizzlies and Lakers game, <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm looking for. Can Anthony Davis duplicate what he did in game three? Mm. And is Dylan Brooks going to duplicate what he did in game three? And that's absolutely nothing. Now, I'm watching for Dylan Brooks. Forget John Morant. Forget AD and LeBron. What is Dylan Brooks going to do? That's mm. who I'm looking to see who's on, if he going to show up to the party. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, he asked for, you know, all the smoke, and now he's taking the heat. Nope. Dylan Brooks. What, Richard? I ain't got nothing to say. Okay, good, because I'm right. Thank you. And, you know, <laughs> you have to think about this. What does this do for your reputation? Obviously, we know that he's one of the most elite defenders, but you went at LeBron James. LeBron James did not take the bait. Mm. It really, honestly, galvanized the rest of the Lakers squad. And I always say this. I know a lot of times we talk about stars. I think series are won by role players. Yeah. I mean, role players that show up, and, you know, we're talking about the Josh Hart's of New York, or even Rui Hatch Tomorrow, having some like consistent games in the postseason, those key factors tilt the balance to teams so the stars can do what they need to do. Okay, right? Anthony Davis was 31 and 17. Anthony Davis, when he plays like that, that's that's why people start talking about the Lakers as ma being able to make a run. And if they can mm -hmm. keep him involved offensively, feed the big man, and he plays defense at the level he's been playing. Woo. And that's what I was saying. That LeBron, a... LeBron didn't take the bait because he knows yeah. AD is priority number right. one. And so they stuck to the game plan, and Dylan Brooks now looks like he's, you know, oh, man, like this is now all on me. Right, but one Lakers player was saying before the game, you know, if that's what Dylan Brooks will say to LeBron about LeBron, what's he going to say about the rest of us? So you're right. It kind of got the whole group coming behind him. Pull out the brooms. This is despite the up-and-down play from James Harden, Joel Embiid on the bench with an injury. They will face the winner of Hawks and Celtics next. So, Ramona, what's the bigger concern? Is it Embiid's health, or is it consistent play from Harden. I actually think it's consistent play from James Harden because okay. if they end up playing the Boston Celtics, these two teams have played each other before and Boston tries to take Joel Embiid out. Embiid passes the ball at a double team much faster than he used to. Who's he passing to? James Harden. Mm -hmm. I think Tyrese Maxey has been great in the, in, the, in the previous series, but James Harden is there for this series in this role to give Joel Embiid a second option and not a tertiary or thirtyary or whatever option you guys were talking about. Oh, oh right the buzzer. Yes, she got the buzzer. it. All right. <laughs> From the team that was swept to a team that avoided being swept, the Timberwolves and Edwards had 34 points, but the story was the Nuggets almost come back, right? 12-point comeback in regulation. Minnesota was able to hang on in overtime thanks to clutch Anthony Edwards. But, Richard, what's the bigger deal? Edwards great play or the T-Wolves blowing this? Yeah. Well, look, I, I think it's a combination. Edwards had to overcome some mistakes. Now, look, I think Chris Finch is a great coach, but this is the second time that we've seen him not call a timeout in certain situations. Your young team is going on, a, go, uh, is, is getting handled by the number one seed. And my biggest issue here is that, look, you had two timeouts. So during this last, like, minute and a half, you call, could have called a timeout, settled your guys that there was five straight possessions where you didn't get good shots, and they were hitting threes on the other end. Forget that. I'm going to finish what I was talking Please about. Do. So you when you it. do not call a timeout, when you do not call a timeout with a young team, mm -hmm. then Taking all of a sudden they start rolls. to get rattled. Mm -hmm. It starts to roll. Instead of call, You went into overtime with the timeout. They went into overtime with a timeout. You could have called a timeout at any point in time. And then what happens? You go into overtime. You're able to talk to your guys. You settle them down a little bit, and they outscore the Denver Nuggets and just ball out in the overtime. That was what Mike Malone was complaining about. But you might not have needed that. You can't go into overtime with any bullets left in your gun. Call a timeout, settle your guys, call a couple of plays, and allow them to get settled. That was a whole word. And Edwards kind of called his own number on that one, though. Who do you expect to take the Miami Bucks game, and who do you expect to take the Lakers-Grizz game tonight, Rich? 
Ooh, this one's tough. Okay, so uh, Miami, this is a tough one. I want to say the Bucks because they're about to get Giannis back. Right. But they've got to win three out of four. I think that's one of the things that we're kind of missing. Again, no Oladipo, no Tyler Hero. They're getting Giannis back. But getting Giannis back ain't just going to solve the 130 points that you've given up every <laughs> single night. That's not who your team is collectively. So getting Giannis back is going to help, but you've got to play better. You've got to get that defense back to what everyone believes is the best or one of the best of all time, in my opinion because they have so much size and depth last thing I'm going to say about uh, Dylan Brooks every we, we heard what Doris said if you come for the king you best not miss mm -hmm. that's what Doris said on the call we know it and so I'm very curious to see Dylan Brooks and to see how the team the Lakers team went around LeBron yep. can this Memphis team come around Dylan Brooks come around John Morant and his injury can they unite whichever team unites the best yep. is going to win that that so, Lakers Grizzly series I think Miami wins is getting Giannis yes, back oh. but I think Miami wins is getting Giannis back but we've seen the real emergence of Kyle Lowry mm -hmm. and Duncan Robinson Woo. for the Miami Heat yep. with Oladipo mm -hmm. out with Herrero out Duncan Robinson all of a sudden making threes again shout out Max my guy Ruth Kevin Love threes. shout out my guy Kevin, Kevin Love, Love. I, know, I know the first. Cavs could use him right now and, oh. <laughs> and guess what the late the Lakers are so the Lakers are so happy that Dylan Brooks didn't get suspended because I can hit him from the sideline oh. yelling he with us. <laughs> he with us. Oh, God. Every time he shoot, he with us. I, I agree with y'all. I think that, <laughs> that Milwaukee George. comes back for this hey, one. Hey, we've had great series, like, across the board. Yeah. Uh, no, they've been exceptional. I just got one question for you guys as we go off air. W what do you think is better? I is is this the better dance move? This is one. this the better dance move? Or is this, this the better celebration? Oh, I think oh, we're, doing, we're, we're doing no, the, no, raise, raise, the, the, the raise the Roof. The Roof is the best dance move. All right, it's Raise the Roof. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.